Hey folks, Coach Patrick here, Dura Station, back with another quick coach tip video. Um, I had a conversation online in the chat uh, the other night, or rather, someone was using the chat widget at the bottom of the website, which is available to people who've been on the team for over a year. Um, and he was letting me know that he had uh, just popped his calf, a little strain in the calf, which he does almost every year, um, trying to be aggressive, a little aggressive with the run results, you know, trying to push himself a little bit harder in preparation for a 5K test. Um, and it kind of brought to mind, you know, I'm always thinking about recovery and management of effort and trying to think about how I can make you guys better athletes. And one of the things that comes to mind for me is the, is the difference um, between bike and run training. So for many people, especially those of you who are new to the team, you know, the way endurance station trains is radically different. Okay, uh, you know, we talk about uh, intervals, we, everything looks like weight workouts, we've got sets, repeats, uh, etc. People are talking about, you know, effort levels for uh, work, effort levels for recovery, scores for the entire workout. There's a lot of things to get in that data. Um, and for those of you who do get into it, it can be um, a rewarding and virtuous cycle of, of training and recovery that leads to improved performance, which is what we want. But there's a flip side to looking at these numbers. You know, um, from a coaching standpoint, I've developed these plans with Coach Rich to help you progress incrementally. Um, but triathletes, you, our demographic, our, our target population, are type A people, and you are renowned for wanting a little more. Uh, and so you'll look at um, a bike workout that says, you know, uh, you know, two by 10 minutes at 85%, and you'll say, you know what, I think I can do those at like 88% or 89%, maybe even 90%. You know, if you did your test properly, the 85% is all that Rich and I want you to do. Now, um, there are times and places where we encourage you to push beyond your current levels of fitness. And there are some people out there on the team who see results in the winter, you know, when they push themselves harder. Other people see results in the summertime when they ride further or run further. And other people see progress at different times of the year. Um, some people may go through a year with no progress despite their training. Uh, that's a different video for a different day. But uh, when you are talking about pushing your fitness on the bike or pushing your fitness on the run, I want you to understand that once you've gotten over the hump of learning endurance station training style and methodology, you have to become fluent in terms of what it means to push the bike and the run. Pushing the bike is very safe. Pushing the run is not. And the way I want you to think about the difference between the two is on the run, you are constantly turning the dial up. To see what you can do. Um... That was totally wrong. That was, I wish I can edit this video. Let me see if I can edit it. All right, if I can't edit it, then we'll just go we'll go backwards. <clears throat> Here's how I want you to do it. On the bike, you are constantly turning the, the dial up to test your fitness and see what you can do. On the run, you run your run at the effort you think is right, and at the end, you go back and see what you did. Okay? So on the bike, we are working harder every day. So if you have a power meter and you know that today's intervals are supposed to be at 220 watts, you might do one at 220, you can do the second one at 223, or 222, or 224. We're talking infinitesimal little slightly gains, but you're every day kind of chipping away at what it means to go a little bit harder. I fully support that. Um, you're blowing up and going too hard on the bike just requires you to spin your legs out, take it easy. If you're out on the open road, you pick up the phone, call someone, have them come and get you, whatever it is, stop at a store, eat a brat like Coach Rich, get a beer, and then get back on your bike and ride home. But doing that on the run is an altogether different enterprise. On a bike, you're in a fixed system. You're sitting on a seat, your legs have to go in a circle, and you're pedaling, very simple. On the run, when people start to push a little bit harder, all manner of technique uh, and form starts to go out of the window. And any problems you have are become exacerbated uh, to the point where you can be doing some real damage to yourself. Not to mention the stress of just running at that peak level of fitness. So in a typical workout on the run, this is the way I want you to work. If the workout says do you know two by one mile, and for you, your target pace is eight minute miles, okay? Go out and run that first one at eight minute miles. Use your Garmin or your GPS device or the distance you know or the high school track or the treadmill to run your eight minute mile pace. Nail that eight minute mile pace. Good, done that first half of the workout. You've also spent eight minutes at eight minute per mile pace. You should have in your head a very good understanding of what eight minute per mile pace is. On that second interval in the run, start out running. You know, the first two minutes, get at your eight-minute pace, and then stop looking at your watch. Just start running at that point in time how you feel. If you feel good in this little section, it picks up a little bit. If you're not feeling so good, it slows down a little bit. And then after six more minutes or when the watch goes beep or when you hit that mile mark, whatever happens in whatever situation you're in, 
hit the lap button and look at the time, okay? Because I would rather you run how you feel and see better results than have you say, my workout says two by eight minute miles today, but I'm gonna try and do them at 740. So I'm just gonna go out and look at 740 and just run as hard as I can to keep 740 there. The cost, the risk associated with that approach to your run training is so great that I have to stop you and say, run smart, run to the intensity levels we give you on the first interval, and then on the second one, run how you feel according to what we know to be that target pace from your first interval and from many, many intervals before that in terms of all your overall training. And let the number at the end of that run surprise you, okay? But you're always running within yourself. Because what happens is people chase the number on the watch, they throw everything else out. I want you to chase that feeling of what it means to run really well, sustainably, and fast, just like you did in the first interval, but maybe you know one degree, two degrees better, and then go back and confirm that afterwards. I want you to find out at the end of your run that you're a faster runner, then spend your entire run trying to prove to yourself in your watch that you're a faster runner. Okay, guys? Good luck with your training. Can't wait to see what you guys can do this out season. Take care.